Right. Hello. So there's a lurking variable with socialism and capitalism. When people start talking about socialism and capitalism, you see you hear most of the same arguments going back and forth continuously. There's one that people tend to ignore or maybe not even recognize is the case. Um, capitalism actively seeks to undermine socialism, exactly the same as the wealthy seek to undermine uh, the poor. The wealthy gain their wealth at the expense of the poor. This is, this is a known factor. Everybody in a capitalistic nation knows that this is what happens. Uh, well, almost everybody. There are somehow always deniers, but it, it's evident that that's the case. You can't become wealthy unless you are impoverishing people. Uh, there's only so many resources to go around. You've decided to make more of them yours. Uh, so, with that in mind, what you have is a situation um, where capitalism actively seeks not only to undermine the poor and the working class in their own countries, but in other countries as well. And uh, it's not at all difficult to do in globalism. It wasn't even difficult to do before globalism. Uh, so when people talk about the relative merits of socialism, what they're failing to acknowledge is the fact that capitalism is uh, actively causing it to fail. It's actively destabilizing. It's actively uh, stealing resources in exactly the same way as it does within its own nation. Uh, it's also capitalizing on things like economy of scales. I've uh, briefly mentioned this before. Uh, like, for instance, with China, China's wage scale is completely different. Their inflation um, has, has brought their market to a different point. So taking uh, building your, your products in China with Chinese labor and then selling them to America at the American, uh, American inflated indexes causes, uh, causes an increase in profits, right? But what it is is also you've, um, you're selling, it, it's just buying low and selling high, right? And everybody likes to think of that as just a basic economic principle and completely innocent. However, what that is, is impoverishing uh, the people in the area of plenty. And that would be a balancing factor if it was impoverishing the wealthy in the area of plenty, but it's not. It's only impoverishing the poor in the area of plenty, and it's, and it's uh, enriching uh, basically the wealthy in the area of poverty. Uh, so what you have is the same nonsense where the wealth is still divided and remains divided and has nothing to do with egalitarianism. It has nothing to do with, uh, a, a, it's not a reasonable system. What you have is a situation in which obviously the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. And we try to pass that off as some form of competition by looking at one of the five metrics and, and suggesting, well, it's fine. If you look at everything together, it's not, it never is. Um, Anyway, if, uh, if you can't see how, um, how the wealthy actively do this, um, where the, the wealthy and capitalism is the thing that produces the wealthy, right? And also maintains it, mostly maintains it. Um, all you have to do is remember Vietnam. Uh, around the time of Vietnam, uh, the wealthy in this nation basically said, um, we're afraid socialism is going to spread. We don't want socialism to spread. We're going to actively attack it, right? And that, that's why we went to Vietnam. That's why we went to, uh, yeah, stop the spread of communism. Uh, we had tremendous amounts of propaganda. Uh, we had war films, we had uh, Captain America was made uh, at around this time. Uh, his sole purpose was to, you know, show how capitalism is great uh, at the time. And yeah, so what you have is a situation in which capitalism actively destabilizes. It's not just, uh, it's not even just socialist nations, by the way, because that's the problem with capitalism. Capitalism is, uh, is a predatory, pathogenic uh, system and it will bleed everything until it's dry. It's a parasite. Um, it's a virus, and it it will replicate and it will spread until it drowns in its own filth. That's what a virus does. Um, that's when the virus dies. Um, 
sometimes that kills the host, sometimes it doesn't, but that's basically um, how a virus virus will operate. And that's that's what capitalism is. It's not sustainable. It's not healthy. Uh, we we can't lift up something that has some basic utility as this this shining virtue on which we should uh, we should uh, hold our, our our country. The any country that holds capitalism as a as a virtue is a country that is suggesting that it is fine to take from everyone who can't stop you. That that's the basic fundamentals. So um, that's why socialism has a hard time. Now, that said, socialism actually, in spite of this, does quite well. Now, then you have um, PR attacks, like uh, so in such and such socialist country isn't doing well. Look at, their, look at their sheets. Well, their sheets don't look like a capitalist nation. They don't blow up because they're not supposed to blow up because you can't blow up. It, blowing up is not sustainable. If you if your profits and your your um, your dollars are exploding, then it's because y y you're stealing, you're taking from someone else and giving to yourself. That's that's where it comes from. Fat, rapid growth does not exist. Rapid growth is not a natural phenomenon. Uh, it, it, all it is is redistribution, and. Uh, that's the reason that the that the rich get richer and the poor get poor. Uh, between that and compound interest and any number of other variables, what you have is a situation where uh, it doesn't matter how much currency is in the market. It doesn't matter if everybody has more money as a raw sum. What matters is that there's still a finite number of resources. No matter what you do, there's a finite number of resources, and those resources can are, are, are accumulated with, with the currency. And... So your relative sum of the currency is at least as important as your as your as your absolute sum of the currency, and your relative sum of the currency is diminishing. The poor are getting poorer, relatively, and that relative isn't it's not meaningless. That directly translates to what they can buy of the actual goods and services that are out there. Um, this is people want to see it one way or the other. And they don't want to see it as both. Uh, it's subjective and subjective at the same time. Everything is. Uh, anyway, uh, back to the back to this. So profits come from somewhere. Blah blah blah. Iterated as previous in videos, but uh, uh, socialism is doing uh, quite well in spite of this. Uh, and it's worth pointing out that socialism is uh, is everywhere. There's no nation that doesn't have socialism. So when you see when you hear narratives about how socialism isn't doing that well, there's not a nation that exists that doesn't rely on socialism. The fundamental elements that make a nation even be able to claim it is a nation are socialist in nature. The fact of the matter is that uh, the military is socialist. Uh, the entire government is socialist. It, it is by, de by design, and it's absolutely necessary. It's not even a nation without being socialist. Would you want to live in a country that was nothing but a corporation? I mean, honestly, really, think about that. Um, what, however much you hate government, imagine living in a country that isn't a country but just a corporation. Imagine living in the country of Coca-Cola. <laughs> think on that for a second, seriously, because that's what capitalism tries to produce. Uh, anyway, so what capitalism is? Capital, uh, I, I mentioned that no country can exist without being um, socialist in, in large part uh, because all of the basic infrastructure is socialist. It's all there for the greater good. Uh, it may not be well distributed in terms of the economics, but that's exactly the point. That's what needs to be fixed. Uh, you can't have... A government without having the rudiments of socialism in place. You can't. Anyway, uh, capitalism, on the other hand, is uh, is basically natural law. Natural law, in case you don't know, is might makes right, right? Except it's not even the mo it's not even honest might makes right. Might makes right could uh, allow for the strong to come out on top. It could allow for the smart to come out on top. It could allow for the fast to come out on top. It could allow for the ambitious to come out on top, which is what capitalism is, by the way. Capitalism is the ambitious. That's the only thing that it is allowed. Everything else is disqualified. It might makes right, but only with the one little category that the people that put it in place 
actually possess, right? Everything else is disqualified. It's might makes right where all of the other mites are disqualified. Capitalism is a deeply flawed concept. And there you have it. Um, if you want to allow for ambition to be a, uh, a valuable trait and, and, and allow for whoever is the most ambitious to come out on top, uh, fine. Okay, that's fine. But um, no laws, right? Just natural law. That's, that's, that's what you're asking for. Fundamentally, that's what you're asking for, except it's not because they want those protections from socialism. They want the, the legal system to be able to ensure that they're protected while they are <laughs> ambitious. Uh, they want all of these social protections. They just don't want to be equitable with the social distributions. And that's, that, that is the absolute fundamental flaw of capitalism. That's the problem with it. Um, a might makes right system is a form of justice. I, I could allow for that. That would be acceptable. Uh, it's very bloody. <laughs> it's very cynical. Um, capitalism is plenty cynical, but it's not particularly bloody at home, right? The blood is, uh, uh, is on foreign shores. Um, but that's what capitalism's honest face looks like. That's, uh, and we're starting to see it at home, actually, and this is where it starts to start, uh, it starts to show what it is. Uh, police officers, for instance, being trained like military rather than like, uh, peacekeeping services. This is actually funny. Our military is overwhelmingly being trained in peacekeeping, uh, <laughs> operations at this point and our police officers are being trained to like uh, combat troops and uh, yeah it's predictable later <laughs>